Hey guys, Dr. Sam here, helping you get closer to great skin. Now I've been overwhelmed by the responses, the appreciation, and all the questions you've been sharing with me on the Acne Solved series that we finished last week. So I thought I would film reactions to some of those questions and comments and share some more information with you on your more specific issues. Let's get started. So first question is from Anna who says, how do you treat hormonal acne? I'm 23, my skin is horrible, full of red scars. I've got very light skin and I've tried everything, please help. So the first thing I would say is that hormonal acne is the same in terms of what happens in the hair follicle as every other type of spot. It's just that many women and as many as 70% of women experience some degree of acne or blemish prone tendencies before their period, that, that week before your, your period starts because of the hormonal changes. So it means that it becomes a pattern, but it doesn't really mean that anything different has to happen in terms of how you approach it. It still tends to be a microcomedone that's at the core, inflammatory blemishes, even though they often have a different quality, these kind of stubborn, tender nodules that happen on the U of the face, along the jawline and the chin, the nature of how we solve them is still the same. It's still about retinoids, it's still about anti-inflammatory measures, it's still about non-comedogenic uh, skincare. So the approach that I share over the three videos applies to you too. Now, the exception to that might be the group that have a condition such as polycystic ovarian syndrome, where they have erratic periods and changes on blood tests and ultrasound of their pelvis to suggest this diagnosis. And that requires a more considered approach for many, sometimes involving medication. But in the first instance, if your periods are regular, you're getting a few spots before your period on a regular basis, try the approach I suggested in the videos. So along the same line, Lex says that different is the thing that's made the most difference to her acne, but wants to know what it does for hormonal acne and is it fine to use long-term or is it ultimately useless without combining it with an antibiotic? So first things first, Differin is a synthetic second generation retinoid designed to help improve tolerance to retinoids. The first generation included tretinoin, which is the big daddy of retinoids and it's actually what's active physiologically in our skin. But for many, the period of retinization, that first one to two skin cycles, makes it so challenging that adherence to treatment for long enough, and I'm talking the three months kind of period of time, to make a difference is just too hard. So Differin, or Adapalene as it's known generically, was developed to make it easier. So ultimately, does it have the same effects? In terms of acne, yes. So it does help reduce the formation of comedones and helpfully, it also helps with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So for those of you who have more sensitive skin or who just want to take it slow because they're a little bit nervous in the first instance, I think Differin is an excellent way to start. Is it safe for long-term use? Yes, it is. And I would say actually better to not rely on anything with antibiotics in it for long-term use. We try to avoid those, except perhaps in the acute phase, we're trying to get control of inflammatory acne. So I would think of uh, adapalene or differin as being great in combination with occasional benzoyl peroxide for the odd breakthrough blemish and azelaic acid as part of a strategy to more specifically target pigmentation. So next question is from Amy. The benefits of differin versus tretinoin for acne and when to move up percentages? This is a good question. So I would suggest to you that differin is a great option for those with sensitive skin and for those who are just targeting acne. So they're not particularly concerned with the anti-aging space. That might be somebody in their late teens, for instance. Differin will give you that unplugging the pores benefit that you get from tretinoin, but it has fewer interactions with the retinoids in the dermis. So I think that's why it tends to cause less of a retinization reaction. So less dryness and irritation. It's now available over the counter in the US. It's considered to be that safe. So Differin is a great entry level retinoid. It's great for those who are just concerned with acne and in the end, in the longer run, you might well find that you benefit from escalating up to tretinoin, which starts at 0.025%, but you might well achieve your endpoints with just differing alone. The reason to consider tretinoin is one, because you're not getting a good enough response. It's not strong enough to control your acne, 
Or two, you have other concerns like preventing fine lines and wrinkles or tackling the signs of sun damage and you want to go further with what your retinoid can achieve. So I don't think of them as being um, mutually exclusive. You can start with different and go up to tretinoin. You can start in tretinoin and go down to different. It's about what gives you the endpoints that you're looking for. So define them and work towards those goals. So Rebecca asks, what do you do when your first course of Rakutane doesn't work? Now, doesn't have much to do with the video series as such, but I do think that everyone, whatever their history, benefits from having a structured skincare approach. You're going to put skincare on your skin anyway. So I would advise adhering to the kind of structure that I recommend where you're using a retinoid and the addition of other topicals, whether it's anti-inflammatory for acute breakouts or it's part of a pigmentation maintenance approach, in which case azelaic acid and other things like BHAs and AHAs are helpful. Now, with specific regard to Rakutane, there is a desired goal when you take Rakutane for a certain number of weeks at a certain number of dose. So the first thing is to check that you had an adequate course in the first place and got to your target quantities of drug taken to give you the best possible chance of not relapsing once it stops. That's the first thing. The second thing is to think about what the cause is. So for, for some people, there is an underlying cause in the terms of polycystic ovaries, um, and so forth. So in those instances, I do often find the relapse rate with Rakutane is high, and that's a group that needs to be properly investigated to diagnose any particular abnormalities of that regard. And then things like spironolactone and the oral contraceptive pill, those sorts of medications need to be considered. So investigate, diagnose PCOS if, it, if, it, if it's present, and then consider the alternative types of treatment with someone who's had experience using these sorts of medications. But there are further things that can be done. And a further course of Rakutane is an entirely reasonable thing to do if the first course wasn't adequate in its dose. I hope that helps. Next question comes from Julia. Uh, I'm fine, I'm having to use both differin and benzoyl peroxide to try and keep on top of my acne. Is that normal? Differin sells itself as a one-stop shop, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I think that's completely normal because if you've watched the video series, you'll, you'll know that I talk about retinoids as being the first line, but that in addition to that, most people will need an anti-inflammatory, hopefully less often as things progress, um, but also there's space in the morning potentially for another additional preventer step that targets pigmentation. So, I mean, some people will be fortunate and different alone will be sufficient or another retinoid, but I think it's incredibly common to need those additional tools. And I think that benzoyl peroxide is a terribly useful anti-inflammatory, even if you just need it once a month for that spot that you get just before you come on. And in fact, different and benzoyl peroxide are already in one formula in the form of Epiduo, which I tend to use um, for those who have difficulty maybe separating the two steps out. So they know they can only really comply with a once daily application. So combining the differin and the benzoyl peroxide in one means you're getting anti-inflammatory and prevention in one step. Boom, you're done. So completely fine to do both. And I don't think it's reasonable for most people to just rely on their retinoid alone. Hope that helps. Now, if you do need um, further information on how to support the use of actives, do download my acne cheat sheet, which is available through my newsletter. And I'll link to how you sign up for that down below in the descriptions box. So in terms of feedback, the lovely Georgia writes, in terms of feedback on the Acne Solved series, amazing and informative, gave me a structure to all the products I've been dipping in and out of for years. Like many, having an awful habit of not sticking to things. If I don't see results in a couple of weeks, my skin looks the best it's done for five years. Cannot thank you enough. Well, that just makes this all worthwhile. Um, sometimes I do think I'm a doctor. I'm doing videos. What does this mean? But actually, when I hear that, uh, I think, you know, this this stuff hopefully is making a real difference to you guys. And, and to read feedback like that makes me feel so good. Um, so please do let me know how you're finding this content. The more involved you get, the more it shapes what I, I give you. And hopefully together we move towards great skin days together. Now, another question. Um, lots of questions on different actually, adapalene, which is really interesting. So Alice says, hi, Dr. Sam, I'm using adapalene 0.1% and it's been one month. Can it help reduce minor acne scars and some mild hyperpigmentation? 
So I think it's super important to understand that your retinoid is not just about preventing the spots of today, but it's about improving the situation for the future. And it really is fundamental to maintenance and hanging on to control once you get it. I think a lot of people just kind of want to put the creams aside after they get their desired goals and sort of be done with that. I just don't think that's unfortunately the way acne behaves. So in terms of scars and pigmentation, what we know about pigmentation, which are those flat marks, scars are the dips, guys, and they can sometimes have pigment within them, but a scar is fundamentally an indentation, so it must be separated out from pigmentation marks, which are flat, simply because the flat ones do better. So typically they fade over the course of a few months, will take longer if you have darker skin tone, and I do cover this in the third video in the series. Scars will often improve, so not to be too despondent about it, but the time frame for that is months to years. Now, do retinoids give that process a helping hand? Yes, we think so, but you must be using them from at least six months and possibly longer. I think there's probably greater effect from stronger retinoids in that regard, the likes of tretinoin and tazarotene, but I think that adapalene will also help that process along. Good luck. Whoa, so much to get through. I think I'll do another one of these videos, guys. So do let me know in the comments down below if you find these sorts of videos responding in the here and now to what you're thinking and saying um, helpful. So please subscribe if you like this kind of content and do sign up to our newsletter if you wanna be the first to see the videos, to hear about new product launches and what we're up to generally. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye for now.